Welcome to Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking features delicious recipes and cooking tips from the Gulf Coast's finest chefs and restaurants. Watch as popular local chefs prepare their special dishes with natural gas. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, provider of clean, efficient natural gas. We're cooking Italian today with Carabas, and joining me from the restaurant is proprietor Travis Doublefield and assistant kitchen manager Kevin Grooms. Guys, you have got some great Caraba recipes for us today. We do, we do. So today we're going to be starting with some meatballs. We're going to do some meatballs from scratch with some fresh ingredients. And then we're going to show you kind of what you can do with those meatballs. Um, there's more than, we're gonna do the, the traditional just spaghetti, okay. but then we can show you what else we can do with some meatballs. And then we're gonna finish things off today with a little bit of dessert. So some rum roasted pecans today. Perfect, and perfect. So. And you know, what I love to do with meatballs is to make more than I need, freeze them. Of course. And they are ready when you wanna a you could meal. you could freeze uh, your meatballs mm -hmm. and keep them. I mean, months, yes. months if you wanted to, as yes. long as you store those little vacuum pack things mm -hmm. they make nowadays. You Perfect. can do whatever you wanted with those, mm -hmm. so it would be amazing. So, yes. Um, the key is just use fresh ingredients so they come out good because okay. you don't want them to taste like they're frozen. Okay. So, so Kevin, <laughs> you gonna do the honors? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. We're gonna start chopping up our vegetables and getting everything ready for our food processor. Mm -hmm. And then we'll mix them all in here and scoop them out for you and let them know how it goes. Okay. So Sounds we good. only use uh, fresh produce. Um, we use fresh herbs. We don't like to use any of the uh, jarred, freeze-dried or, you know, uh, stuff like that. We like to use all fresh. So a little bit of uh, green onions. Some people call them scallions, but green onions, definitely mm -hmm. the way it goes. So um, we're gonna add these. So we're gonna do all of the uh, Fresh vegetables are going to go into the food processor with a little bit of egg, a little bit of water. Um, so we've got some green onions that are going in. And then we're going to have some fresh basil, so whole fresh basil leaves. Um, you can pick up most of this stuff if you're trying to copy this kind of stuff at home. Right. Uh, you can pick up most of this stuff at the grocery store. Um, you know, you may not have a food processor at home. Uh, you could use a blender. Um, it would work. Mm -hmm. um, we're just rough chopping. Just real easy to put stuff you know, into the food processor and let the, let the food processor do the rest of the work. Um, Kevin's just mostly for show. And, you know, a little bit of fresh parsley. Like I said, once again, it's all, we use all fresh. We try to stay away from any of the stuff out of the jar. Um, do everything as fresh as you can. So. And the fresh basil makes a big difference. Oh, a world it? of difference, world of difference. You can actually taste it. So, yes. and you can smell the difference. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it's cooking, you can smell the difference. And when you're tasting it, you can actually taste the, yes. you know, the fresh stuff. So, so good. Um, we're using fresh whole garlic. Uh, we've already got it out of the clove. Um, you know, we actually get it in that way. It's a whole lot easier. You could, when you buy it at the grocery store, you're gonna have to buy a whole clove mm -hmm. and squish it out of there. That's, you know, labor of love because a lot of work to get you know a couple of those clothes out but right. uh, it's definitely worth it don't use the don't use the powdered <laughs> so it's the real thing the real, the deal. real thing and only the real thing so mm -hmm. now what kevin's doing now is we're cutting up a uh, yellow onion you know about a quarter of a yellow onion you know once again just big enough to mm -hmm. you know let the food processor blade do its job so you've got green onion and your white and yellow the yellow onion, onion or mm -hmm. white onion i guess mm -hmm. you could use either or uh these tastes are real similar okay so. All right, and then we're doing, uh, you know, one egg. So the whole egg, all of it in there. And... It's hard to see the water. Yes. <laughs> Good stuff. Keep things moist. Yep. And you're ready, huh? And we're ready, and yeah. That's it. So. So we're just taking that down enough to basically, you know, pulse up those vegetables mm -hmm. and, you know, make them easy to work with now. So, and then what he's doing right now is he's adding all the wet in and spatula all that goodness out of there because that's mm -hmm. the best part. It's always the stuff that's stuck in the bottom of the bowl. So, How many meatballs do you all go through a day? I would probably say at least 100, maybe 150 meatballs a day. A day. Um, all made from scratch. So, wow. yes, um, my prepper's job security is definitely uh, well taken care of. I was going to say, yeah, you so. must just have a meatball maker. Uh, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. So, they make meatballs. We make all the sauces, all the soups, all the dressings, and everything from scratch. So, 
Um, Goodness. They, we pretty much have two guys back in the, in the back that you can't see that are basically making sauce all day, every day. That's what their job is. So um, doing it just like uh, just like they did back in the old days. Well, so. they do it very well. Yeah. So now we're adding a little bit of salt and a little bit of Romano cheese, a little bit of uh, freshly ground black pepper, um, a little bit of breadcrumbs. Are these plain breadcrumbs? These are just yeah. plain breadcrumbs, so not the Italian. We've got a, we don't need Italian breadcrumbs for this because mm -hmm. we're adding all the herbs and everything right. fresh. Right, so. you got the cheese, so it's yes. good to Yes, and go. that's fresh grated Romano cheese. Mm -hmm. We did that ourselves, so. And then we're actually going to be using, so for our meatballs, we use uh, ground beef and ground pork, 50-50. Uh, so, and we're just making a little mini batch here. This is actually mm -hmm. probably, in all my years with Carab, is the smallest batch of meatballs we've ever made. So I've never <laughs> done one pound of meatballs. I've always <laughs> done at least 20. So Gosh. Uh, it's a little different to do such a small batch. I bet. So, I know Kevin's probably never done a <laughs> small batch either. So maybe at home, but definitely not for you know our recipes. So. Right. But and then when you're making meatballs, it's important to get your hands in there to get dirty mm -hmm. a little bit. You know. Um, it's like meatloaf. You just you got to just in get in there. There is no easy it. way to do it. There's no clean way to do it. You just got to get in there and get your hands dirty. Mm -hmm. And you know we were teasing him a little bit about you know wear gloves or not wear gloves. So. Um, and yeah, you I'm want gonna... it well incorporated, don't you? All the you do. Right? So there's a rule. So whenever you think you're done mixing, oh, mix for 10 minutes. All right, that works. Um, <laughs> you know, then that's kind of the rule because you're mm -hmm. never, you can never mix enough. Yeah. You want a little bit of all those flavors in every bite, mm -hmm. and that's really what makes it good. And so. you don't want a, le a real lean ground beef, do you? No, don't we you use a, a little we bit use of about an 80-20. Yeah. Um, you want you want some fat, and mm -hmm. that's also what the pork's for. Right. And you'll see. So when we actually bake these. Um, you know, in a convection oven on 350 for about, you know, 20 minutes, mm -hmm. uh, we actually let them cool in all the fat in the pan because your meatballs will actually soak that oh, back yeah. up a little bit. And then you don't get those dry meatballs. You get a well mixed, mm -hmm. you know, nice and juicy meatball. You I don't want it dry. I've that are like golf balls. Yeah. And that's no. not what you want. So no. it should not turn into dust when you're right. done. That's when you bite right. into it. That's, that's bad. So. But. You want a good moist meatball. Yeah. So. And now we're going to dish a few of these out. Okay. And then you've got your oven set on what temperature? On 350. So. 350. Okay. And you said about 20 minutes? Yeah, about, we're going to do 10 minutes and then we'll spin them. Oh, okay. And, you know, and then mm -hmm. we'll give it another good 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Oh, these are going to be good. Oh, yeah. So, if Kevin, you want to start uh, making those nice and round for us. Mm, yes, sir. Oh, I see. Then you yeah, finish so warming. Really, these are just a, a portioning. Uh -huh. So we're just kind of making them, you know, about the same mm -hmm. size with the with the scoop. And then we go through and actually roll these out. This is definitely So do you have a meatball bag, so. maker, you know, that shapes them and rolls them and everything? Yes, pretty much. We have a guy that right now in the restaurant is probably doing this same exact <laughs> thing, just on a much larger, instead of a little bowl like this. Oh, I can uh, imagine. He probably has a bowl that's as big as the three of us combined. So, wow. uh, And he's just scooping away. And we do that every day. Every single morning we make the meatballs. We make the, uh, you know, make all the sauces and everything else. So, you know, you end up with one small one there. It's amazing. But, yeah, so. But it's definitely, uh, you know, you see this one pound, we got about, I don't know, about 10 or 12 meatballs out of it. Yeah. And, you know, which is perfect for, you know, about a family of four at home. Sure. Um, you know, and it's, it's good. It's really, really good stuff. Mm -hmm. So all from scratch. Love it. You know, and then this will go in the oven uh, for about 20 minutes. So we'll do 10 minutes and then we'll turn them and do about another 10 minutes. Okay. And then we'll show you what you can do with your labor of love. So, Sounds great. Yes. We're going to take a commercial break right now, but we'll have a lot more from Carabas after this. Natural gas homes are in demand. Here's what home builders have to say. I would say majority of the of our homeowners that come in and talk to us and see us, that is one of the first items that gets brought up would be natural gas. A lot of our customers are on the energy efficiency side. There's really no way you can argue the efficiency of gas over power, in my opinion. That is a very, very big selling point in our houses is natural gas. Go blue and save green with natural gas from Pensacola Energy. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. We're cooking with Carabas today, and Travis, it looks like our water is ready for yeah, our so spaghetti. Yeah, so we've got a good rolling boil. So uh, we like to cook on natural gas. Um, you just It's easier to control your heat, I think, when you can Absolutely. actually see the fire. We're old-fashioned, like caveman style. I like to see the fire. It makes me, <laughs> makes me feel all warm at heart you when I can actually see it. You can just that flame. You can see it. You can see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So um, I like cooking with an open flame. Um, 
you know. So, um, but what you want is a nice, clean, salted water. So we use kosher salt, and we use the basically the one-to-one -one recipe. So it's an it's a gallon of water to an ounce of pasta, you know, and to or to a pound of pasta to an ounce of salt. So okay. um, it's a one-to-one-to-one. -to -one -to -one. So we've got two gallons of boiling water, two ounces of salt, and we're gonna cook about two pounds of spaghetti. So. One of the most common things I get asked is why doesn't my spaghetti at home taste like yours at the restaurant? And most of the time, it's because people love to overcook their spaghetti or they, mm. they cook way too much in a little tiny pot. Mm -hmm. People like to break their pasta and then throw it in there and then it doesn't look right. It doesn't have that eye appeal and you eat with your eyes first. So uh, we've got our nice, you know, clean salted water. Uh, we're taking about our two pounds of spaghetti. Okay, and the key is so when you're adding this in, you kind of want to fan it around a little bit and then stir it all in so it all sinks down in there. So, and then we set our timer here for uh, eight minutes and we're gonna stir it about every two. So um, while that's going, and it's important not to overcook this because let me tell you, oh, that's when well, you, you get that. Al dente. You, that al, you want that perfect al dente. To a bite. And mm -hmm. so many people overcook their pasta and they get mush. And then they don't like pasta and it's because they don't cook it properly. So, but one of the easiest dishes to execute is also one of the most messed up dishes in most places, in most right. homes. So, right. and even in some restaurants where they just can't figure pasta out. So, and when um, you when you yes. when you do eat it and it's cooked perfectly, it makes all the difference in the world. All the difference in the world. Something that's so simple mm -hmm. can be so good if it's done right, but it could be so wrong yep. if it's not done right. So, uh, we use a pasta fork to stir that because um, you know I think it's the easiest way to do it at home. They could use a chef spoon, whatever mm -hmm. you have handy. So. Um, with those meatballs that we made. So what we what did, um, we actually took our meatballs um, after they were done cooking. Um, we'll show you what those look like out of the other in a minute. Um, and we actually took some of our, basically our, our pomodoro sauce, but mm -hmm. our tomato, our base tomato, our mother sauce, mm -hmm. and we heat those up. We usually let our meatballs cool in the fat, and then we heat them back up in our pomodoro. So. Uh, this is our meatballs. So I'm going to show you what you can do with some meatballs other than just the spaghetti meatball dish that we're going to be doing. Okay. So um, what we like to do here is we've got our dish ready to be plated. And so we actually take our meatballs and we just spoon a little of this out. And then Kevin is going to take some of our sauce here. So this is one of your dishes at the restaurant. This, so this one's right out of the restaurant. So, okay. um, you know, and we like to spoon this out. And then Kevin, if you'll get that ricotta cheese ready. And, you know, so. This is one of my favorite. Yeah, this is a great little appetizer. People appetizer just love this. Yeah. It is so good. You can use that other spoon there. Yeah, there you go. So. We're just going to spoon this that right creamy over. Creamy ricotta. Mm, oh, so yeah. Goodness. This is so good. So, so simple, too. Like, some mm -hmm. simple flavors sometimes are the best. So, um, you know, and we're just adding a little of this to it, right? And, you know, we should add a little more hot sauce there, but that's okay. Beautiful. So, and then that's plated, and then, you know, maybe dress it up. You can get a little fancy at home. You know, the mm -hmm. one thing I would say that the dry herbs are good for is maybe on top of your. Uh, dishes, uh -huh. you know, because not everybody has uh, like a fresh, you know, parsley lying around, but we do. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make this, you know, look pretty. And then, uh, you know, you could serve this up with a spoon on the side, you know, to mm -hmm. serve people or this will wear on the plate ready to go. But super simple and people just love this mm. dish. So it's, it's so easy. It's easy as it gets. It's just some meatballs, perfect little appetizer, uh -huh. you know, and, you know, everybody always asks me, what can I do with my meatballs? What can I do with my meatballs? How do I cook spaghetti? These are a few of the things that... Mm -hmm. Very easy, once you know the technique. Yes, once you learn the technique, you know, the it's rules. so easy yeah. to do, yeah, so... <laughs> now, um, tell us about your Meatball Magnifico. So right now we have a special, it's our Meatball Magnifico, and it is a half pound of meatball, essentially, that is stuffed with a mozzarella cheese, uh -huh. and then we bread the whole thing and we deep fry it. Wow. And when, then it's served over a bed of spaghetti, with a side and a super salad and our bread and you're gonna be full. And you don't go home hungry, right? No, you're gonna go home. It makes a great sandwich the next day. So, cause there that's you what go. you're gonna end up having to do with it. Cause you're not gonna finish it all. No one ever does. So uh, there are a few that do, but not many. It's yeah. uh, definitely a- And that's such a yes. treat to go to Carabas and experience. 
Yes. You know, a dish like that. You know, it? a good Italian place, you should leave fat and happy. We should ruin your afternoon. You should be good for nothing but a nap on the couch when you leave me. So um, if you don't leave an Italian place like that, then you should never go back there. Because that's right. true Italian. We should ruin your day. That's so, right. Um, that's really how it should go for mm -hmm. you. So, um, so now the spaghetti's almost there. You hand me that at the saute pan. And we're going to heat up uh, some of our pomodoro sauce. So Kevin, if you'll go ahead and I'll switch here with you. So let Kevin earn his paycheck today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that looks so good. Tell our viewers about your wine dinners. So we do a wine dinner every month, uh, usually the second Tuesday of every month, mm -hmm. um, you know, for anywhere between 30 and 50 people. And our wine dinners, um, well, they're a lot of fun. So we do four courses, uh, four different wines generally, and four different course, you know, four course meal. Mm -hmm. And so we'll start with a, course of wine, you know, and then, you know, of one particular wine. And then, so for the next course, then we'll do a course of food. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do another wine, and then another food, and another one, and then the main course of food, and then a dessert course, where we'll usually feature a dessert, and then like a dessert wine, or uh, if it's not a wine, it'll be like a specialty mm -hmm. dessert drink. So, um, yeah. They're you're, a lot of fun. Oh my goodness, they're so much fun. So they you're actually gonna, fun. we're gonna con you into coming to the next one, so. And it's it's a good time, and you, you know. And you, you know what I like is that you're sitting at tables with people you've never met before. No, we do it but family you, style. Old you know, you leave friends. Yes, so, I, so I have fun. people that have been coming to every one of them that we've ever done, and they meet at every wine dinner, mm -hmm. and they have a blast together, yes. and they truly have a good time, and they know it. It's they their monthly time, so. social, right? It, it really is their monthly social, mm -hmm. and they have a good time, and it's good company. It's mm -hmm. good company. So, and I host it along with. Uh, you know, some of my best servers, uh, Jason and Kelly, mm -hmm. are, they do every one of them mm -hmm. with me. And they've been at every wine dinner since I've been in that restaurant. And they do them all, and they do a great job. So, wow. yeah. Well, so, it's a lot of fun, and you get yes. to taste some great wines. Oh, my goodness, yes. And, of course, the food. Is amazing, as always. So. You know, it's always a surprise. It's always a surprise. Because it's always different. We, we try to change it up every time, um, mm -hmm. although I do get a lot of requests. Um, and we do... You know, try to accommodate it as best mm -hmm. we can. Uh, I also have people with specialty diets and special needs right. that if they couldn't have something on our menu that, you know, we make changes, mm -hmm. make people happy. So. And it's the second? That's usually what, the Tuesday? second Tuesday of every month. Of every month, so okay. So occasionally we do have to switch that around because of holidays or, mm -hmm. you know, other scheduling conflicts. But we try to be consistent so people can plan around it. Okay. So, so then yeah. you check your website, make reservations. Check the website. Um, you can sign up for the Dine Rewards. You'll get the emails. Um, so go to dine-rewards.com and mm -hmm. sign up and get on board with it. So, That's right. Yes, it's absolutely. a lot so. of fun. I've enjoyed all the ones I've yes, been to. Yes. So. It's great. So. How's our pasta doing? we got one more minute left. Okay, should we take a break right here and have this ready when we get back? I think we can do yeah. that. That would be perfect. Yeah. Okay, we'll uh, take a break right now. We'll be right back and we'll be ready to start our dessert. So see you with us. Cooking with natural gas is more controlled than using an electric range. But more importantly, they're less expensive to operate. Don't get burned with electric. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Natural gas homes are in demand. Here's what home builders have to say. We started KW Homes in 1987, and we've been building custom homes in the area since, since then. A lot of our customers are asking for natural gas. Um, I went with it in my personal home. Uh, I especially like the tankless water heater. Uh, when we have family over, we don't run out of hot water, which is great. Um, just keeps on making it as long as we need it, which is, which is really nice. Pensacola Energy. Go blue and save green. The meatballs we made at the beginning of the show are ready. They are. So they are sitting in all of all the fat still. So we like to let those meatballs actually sit in the pan they cooked in um, until they're about room temperature. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is if you ever pulled anything hot right out of the pan, it's really soft mm -hmm. and will break apart on you. So, and we actually let those cool. And then we actually put them, you know, we refrigerate them, and then we right. heat them back up to order as we need them, as we were doing earlier. Okay. Uh, in the fresh pomodoro sauce, we heat them up, and um, then, our, of course, our pasta is ready now, too. So uh, our pasta cooked for eight minutes, and we went ahead and pulled our pasta out of the, you know, clean salted water. And now we're adding it into our base pomodoro. So mm -hmm. just our, our mother sauce, our tomato sauce. So, which is essentially just, you know, tomatoes and 
Then we've got some, you know, red onions, lots of garlic, salt, pepper, some fresh basil, so good. all the good stuff, but only the good stuff. So a little bit of olive oil, a little extra virgin olive oil in there too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then we go ahead and we, you know, so you can just do spaghetti with pomodoro or, you know, as we do in the restaurant, you know, um, you can actually just go ahead and throw some meatballs right. in there, you know, and that's just a basic spaghetti meatball. So mm -hmm. uh, we figured we would show some of the basics and what you want is a good al dente pasta. It should have a little, a little bit of firm bite to the pasta. You don't want it to just be mushy. Right, so. and yours was not all clumped together in the strainer either. No, when so when you, when you cook a good al dente, it doesn't mush together. Right. So um, it shouldn't be baby food. It mm -hmm. should be nice and firm. It should mm -hmm. have some texture to it. It should have, you know, not a crunch, but it should be just cooked just beyond that and right. not much more. And, you know, it, should be firm. It's mm -hmm. not. It's not supposed to be mushy. So right. that's people's biggest mistake with with pastas. They overcook their pasta and they serve mush. So we don't want yeah. mush. We want good, fresh, you know, firm al dente, and that's the term for it. Is al and, dente. And cooking correctly too, when you go to, you know, spoon out your pasta, it's not. You're not picking up the whole thing. Right. So if you <laughs> dump your pasta, and everybody does that, so you cook off a big batch for the whole family, right? And right. then you get ready to serve. You've got your tomato sauce set. Everybody has mm -hmm. their own secret recipe for their tomato sauce. Uh, some people just, you know, like to use right out of the jar and add some meat to it. You know, other people like to make it from scratch mm -hmm. all day in the crock pot, let it simmer all day, whatever, whatever your particular flavor is. Um, and then they, so they spend all day on the sauce and then they mess the pasta up that goes with it. And that's where they ruin it. And so what you do is you take the pasta and as you pull it out of the clean salted boiling water, um, you want to add a little bit of olive oil to it, stir it up so that way it doesn't clump all together. And if it's not overcooked, it won't clump. If it's al dente, it'll you'll still be able to get an order at a time with your tongs without having to ruin your dish. So. And you don't rinse it with water? Uh, no, we okay. don't rinse it. We do not rinse it. Because that's another mistake. Yes, no, do. we don't rinse it. Um, you know, we just give it a quick toss with a little mm -hmm. bit of olive oil and that's it. Mm -hmm. And then some people like to actually save the water that they cook it in for other things. You can, it makes a good base for sauce. It actually right. helps some sauces actually stick to the pasta. So mm -hmm. it's all personal preference there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, starts with the meatballs. If you do the meatballs right, then a good pasta, then find a good tomato sauce. Yeah. So, mm. you know, between those two dishes, yeah, hopefully we've got you on the right start. And then, Gosh. of course, we have to finish with something sweet. Absolutely. Everybody loves dessert, especially me, because, you know, I'm a little fat kid. So, you know, we will. <laughs> I, listen, I don't mind starting with dessert. You know? I, I don't mind starting <laughs> that way with dessert. I'm not too full so, for dessert. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, Kevin always has to shoot me away from those rum most pecans because they're delicious. And so. you all have some great desserts. Mm. We do. We do. And we make them all at the restaurant. So, you know, they're delicious. What was the chocolate? What's the chocolate? Uh, the Sonori Chocolate. So, that is definitely our bread and butter. That's, um, you know, a basically a chocolate brownie, and then it's fresh chocolate mousse that we make from scratch in the restaurant, and then a fresh whipped cream, and it all sits in a puddle of chocolate, and then we cover the whole thing with chocolate, and yeah, it's definitely, if you're a chocolate lover, and you like brownies, and you like whipped cream, and you like, you know, uh, chocolate mousse, then that's definitely dessert for you. So that's definitely what I bring home to my wife when she's mad at me. That's well, my. I feel like I've gained two pounds just listening to you talk <laughs> yes. about it. Yes, yes. So well, that's the idea. So like I said, you should never leave an Italian place hungry. So right. if you do, don't ever go back there. That's, that's right. bad news. So That's right. Like my grandmother said, manja manja, which means eat up, eat mm -hmm. up. That's yes. Right. You got to feed of it. it. You got to feed. You got to eat it all up. So that's, right. you know, that's what I make my kids do. You're not allowed to get up from that table till you finish. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, so. especially when you have something as good as this. Absolutely. So let's start our dessert. So here. yes, we're gonna jump right into something sweet here. So egg whites. So we want a couple of eggs with the white mm -hmm. only. So hopefully you know we don't mess that up too much here. So. Uh, and what's the name of this dessert? So the, the, right now we're doing the rum, the rum roasted pecans. Okay. So egg white only. So whenever you're doing this, it's just kind of making sure you don't want any of the membrane. You just want mm -hmm. the white. So. You did good, Travis. Yeah, I know. It's almost like I've done that before, once <laughs> or twice. So, and then you just basically, you know, um, you want to go ahead and do the other egg too. Yep. So. And then you're gonna whip it. And then we're gonna whip it. Okay. And then you know, the technical term is you know we're gonna whip the heck out of it. <laughs> uh, right. Put lots of air in there, and we're gonna do it by hand. We don't. Uh, okay. You know, no cheating. We don't use a. Oh, mm -hmm. an electric mixer. I guess you could at home. You could use an electric mixer, but you know that's what I have him for. So that's I don't right. need an electric mixer when I have have this guy standing next to me. So and then you're gonna add some good rum. Yes, a little bit of mm -hmm. Myers rum, but any dark rum would do. We're using Myers here, but okay. uh, you want a tablespoon of uh, 
you know, heavy dark rum. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where all your flavor's at, so. And then you whip. Okay. So lots and lots of whipping, so this might get a little loud. But, okay. Um, and in about 20 minutes, when he's done whipping, we'll just have something that looks like this peaks, I guess. Thick peaks? For it. Yeah, so it'll turn white and quick with cream. Okay. All right, so now we've got a uh, good stiff peak, so you can see that it's got a little bit of a little bit of body now. It definitely stands up on its own. So that was your egg white with a little bit of rum, just and a lot of muscle. So yes. a lot, a lot of muscle. So uh, once that's all in there, uh, we're going to use some cinnamon, some sugar. Nothing wrong with a little bit of sugar. Mm -hmm. all right, pinch of salt. All right, we're going to fold all that together. All right, and then we're using uh, we're using a pound of uh, about a pound of you know pecans here. Um, you can get these at you know pretty much any grocery store, mm -hmm. specialty store. Mm -hmm. um, you know most of the big superstores nowadays carry these. So, and then basically you're going to candy these. So we're going to toss these in here. So here you are, Kevin. Go ahead and throw those in there for you. And then we would just spread these out on a on a sheet tray and we would bake them for about an hour, maybe an hour and fifteen minutes at a real low temp. So about a, what 220, 225, right? Okay. And they want these to bake. And when they come out, uh, what you get is something, something more- Something delicious. <laughs> right, something, they look like candied pecans. Yes. So that's what you get when they come out. And, They're good. you know, as we found out earlier when we were snacking mm -hmm. on these, these are really good. So, and you could do, you could just eat them plain, which is what I do. Um, but at the restaurant, uh, we like to serve these up with, you know, some fresh vanilla ice cream, right? Cause you could never go wrong with some oh, vanilla ice no. cream, so. Mm -hmm. So we got our vanilla ice cream there. And then we can go with some of our <gasps> caramel sauce right over the top there. And top it with our pecans. And, oh yeah, top it with some pecans, just like that on the top. And man, that's perfect. right there. That's that's perfect. a perfect, perfect dessert for everybody. It sure so, is. Mm, you know, that is it where here. it's at. So yes, absolutely, Travis. let everybody see that. But that's something you can actually do that at home. And uh -huh. it tastes delicious, and it's really easy, that and that'll amazing. definitely blow your friends away if you try that at home. So <laughs> you'll be a hero. Of wine so. and you're in heaven. Oh my goodness, yeah. So or you could just do what I do and eat, hog all the nuts and don't tell anybody you have them. Eat them all, so because they're delicious. So um. well, before we leave, tell everyone about your catering. Yes, yeah, so we offer catering. So we are right downtown, uh, 311 North 9th Avenue, mm -hmm. right across the street from the Civic Center. We almost share a parking lot with them. And we offer catering, so from groups as small as 10 all the way up to several hundred people. Mm -hmm. And tis the season, so come see us. Yes, and uh, your website? It's carabas.com, and you can get everything you need there. Absolutely, the mm -hmm. menus and, menu and uh, everything all else. the catering yes. that you do. Our catering right menu, there. all of our menus. Our catering menu, yep. lunch menu, or dinner menu is all there. So we're for lunch every day, mm -hmm. and catering menus there too. Great. So. Well, gentlemen, you have done a great job. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thanks for having us. This delicious meal, boy, yes. I'm going to dig in on yes, this. Yes, absolutely. Sure. Don't let it go to sure. waste. You have to absolutely. eat it all. Well, you'll have to come back and do more we will. recipes we will. for us. Absolutely. Okay, we hope you join us again next Sunday. We'll be here with more Coastal Cooking. Thank you. This has been Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, provider of clean, efficient, natural gas. Join us each Sunday at 6 p.m. for more Coastal Cooking.